so guys as of now we have understood what is a binomial distribution we have understood uh, what is a discrete and continuous variable and binomial was basically pro probability mass function right so now we are going to see an example of probability density function so what is a probability density function it's a probability distribution of a continuous variable and now in probability mass function we talked about binomial distribution in probability density function we are going to talk about normal distribution so binomial distribution is one of the more popular kind of distributions in probability mass functions similarly in probability density functions normal distribution is by far the most popular distribution but definitely these are most popular that doesn't mean that this is the only distribution that is there in probability mass function this is probability density function similarly binomial distribution is not the only uh, probability distribution function when it comes to probability mass functions so normal distributions so normal distribution is something that we have heard uh, probably a lot of times we goes by the name uh, normal distribution or bell curve or something of that sort right so many things uh, and most important is we will now investigate obviously i've told you about the most important distribution so many things that closely follow normal distributions are heights of people size of things produced by machines errors in measurement blood pressure marks on a test a uh, lot lot of things lot of real real life observations right variables are basically normally distributed right scores in an exam all of these are basically uh, examples of normal distributions now why is this so we'll first go into that but before we go into that let's understand what normal distribution looks like so this is how your normal distribution looks like so this is your distribution and this is how your normal distribution looks like so this is a bell curve or whatever you call it and as you would probably realize by now that most of your things that you see in, in real life are examples of normal distributions so a continuous random variable x is said to follow a normal distribution if its probability density function can be written as this right so this is fx and this is a probability distribution of x right so you can say this is like sort of the histogram right the histogram for fx it's not exactly a histogram because histogram you would basically have discrete bins in case of continuous variable this is basically a distribution function right so at the middle of the value so th this is what a new normal distribution would look like right so at the middle you would have a highest number of concentration and it kind of gradually do grows so everything that we discussed right now height weight of people everything basically follows a normal distribution marks obtained in an exam all of this follows a normal distribution so there's a lot of people in the middle and then the frequency of people on both sides kind of goes down right so how does this what is the equation of this kind of a line it's represented like this 1 by sigma root 2 pi e to the power x minus mu by sigma Half and there's a square. So this is the equation of a. This is the equation of a normal distribution, right? So this function, this function basically is. You, you can basically write this as this, right? So where? So this is the equation of a function which is distributed with mean mu, and standard deviation sigma, and it's represented as this, right? So it's n and mu and sigma so mu and sigma are the only two unknown parameters here right now for every x value you basically if you are given mu and sigma you can basically find out what is the distribution of fx right so mu and sigma are the two parameters that are used to define this if you are given mu and sigma if you are given mu and sigma you can basically come up with this curve right and this curve would always look like something like this where it is distributed around mean and then this middle value right where it's got maximum concentration that is the mean and then the standard deviation is sigma right and it is denoted as n of mu comma sigma so this is the denote this is the understanding of normal distributions normal distributions are all those distributions in real life where you have a lot of people at the center and then the distribution kind of falls off as you go towards extreme values right uh so now let's look at some of the important parameters of so as, as i have already discussed all normal curves are bell curve right bell shape so you have a lot of people at the middle and then it kind of falls off at the end so normal distribution mean equals to median equals to more this is something if you would remember from previous days lecture we had talked about this 
in case of uh, normal distribution you basically have everything about everything the center value where it's highly populated the entire population that's exactly where you would have mean that's the same place you would have median and your mode right so this particular thing mu is supposed to be mean but because it's a it's a normal distribution so then that is also equals to median and that is also equals to mode right because in case of an absolutely perfect normal distribution this is this all of this would coincide right so obviously symmetry about the center 50 percent of the values are less than mean and 50 percent values are greater than mean right? which basically is exactly the idea of median median is exactly the value which divides your total number of values into 50 percent values right so exactly the value at the center is your median so because 50 it's a mean coincides with median you can also say that 50 percent of the values are less than the mean and 50 percent greater than the mean and total area under the curve is one so that's an interesting for that's an interesting piece of information which is which is interesting but not uh, so unintuitive this is very intuitive why would this be because we know that probability so this is basically a random variable right so your random variable could be uh, say weight of people ages or weight of people for example right so weight of people is your random variable x right and so it has got different values it can start from say i don't know 0 0.01 kgs all the way to say uh, 180 200 kgs right for example maximum probably and this is this other corresponding probabilities for that right so it would probably be extremely low 001 and this is probably also extremely low and then somewhere in the middle where it's probably 75 you would probably have a lot of high probability right so let's say 0.5 so obviously when you plot all of this you would basically say this is 0.5 this could be 0.3 also let's say 0.3 right so uh so it based on this you can basically see that this basically is an example of a normal distribution right so the point i was trying to say is this that because this is a normal distribution and these are different possible values of the uh particular uh, random variable right so this given there are all the possible values i mentioned here we know that some of all the possible these are mutually exclusive events right so for some of the probabilities of each of these points p of this so p of this plus p of this and p of all the values right if you possibly take all the possible probabilities all the possible random values of weight that yeah so this is your random variable and this can go all the way down to here and this is all the way down to here right so so now let's consider the weights right so weights of people so weights of people can theoretically go from all the way from minus infinity to all the way from plus infinity. Obviously, no one is weight, no one's way actually is minus infinity or plus infinity. In real life, it could probably go all the way from minus 0 0.01 to probably say 200, 300 kgs, right? 200 kgs. I know TD do not make anyone weighing more than 200 kgs. So that's probably the real life. In actual theoretical limit, it could go all the way from here to here, right? So it's probably extended on both the sides with the maximum population being around mu, right? Which is your mean. So in this kind of a normal distribution, you would basically see that the area under this curve is one. Now, why is that so? Because you have, these are all different, uh, these are all different probabilities, right? For each point, you are basically getting what is the number of, what is the probability of people who would be at that particular point, right? So what is the probability of people having that corresponding weight? So if you take all those probabilities, your area under the curve is basically nothing but summation of all those probabilities, right? So if you take all those probabilities and add them up, they would come out to be one, right? Because your weight has to be somewhere between minus infinity and infinity, right? So your weight, so the, all the probability, all the weights are between minus one, minus infinity to plus infinity. So theoretically, if you take all the possible weights and their corresponding probabilities, you and add them up. That's basically, if you add them up, you will basically get the area under the curve. And you add them up, you would basically get to plus one, right? Which is basically because the summation of all possible probabilities should be one, right? The same way if you take, if you roll a die and there are six possible outcomes, right? Now, if you sum the probabilities of each of those six outcomes, you would basically get six into one by six, one, right? Which is because 
Those are the, there are six only possible outcomes. If you sum all their probabilities, it would come out to be one, right? Similarly, in this case, there are only as many weights, right? So that your weights can only be between minus infinity to infinity. So theoretically, if we take all the weights between minus infinity to infinity and get the probabilities at each of those points. The prob remember this, this particular point on the graph is basically representing the probability that any person would have this corresponding weight and this, this is a weight, right? So this is W2, let's say. So probability X equals to W2 is given by 1 by root 2 pi into sigma into exponential w minus mu by sigma square into there's a 2 out here right so if you calculate this right so obviously if you know mu and sigma if you are given mu and sigma if you are given mu and sigma you can basically given w2 you can calculate what is the probability that someone would have this particular weight right so if you take all of such weights from minus infinity to plus infinity and add them that should come out to be exactly one so now looking at John's data, so we know that John had sales price data 1460 houses in Brooklyn. Now let's plot a graph that shows us the sales price versus frequency of that price. So now if we do that in Python, we see that this is how the curve looks like. So this is not exactly a normal curve because this, though it has, it looks like a bell. The problem is there's a, there's a extremely high, uh, this is not symmetric, right? Around the mean. So your mean is probably somewhere around here, which is around say 15,000, right? So around 15,000, you see the mean but it's not symmetrically distributed around 15,000. So it's not an exact normal distribution. Uh, it's skewed to the left, right? So that makes some sense because we saw yesterday that we had a lot of outliers on the upper end of the price. If you remember, there were 61 outliers that we had seen, right? Uh, on the upper side of the data. So if you were to remove the outliers, it would resemble somewhat of a normal distribution. If we remove those outliers at the end of the data set, probably we'll probably have something which looks more like a normal distribution. So we have learned about standard deviation and how it's most it's the most commonly used measure of how spread our observations and the data are. When we calculate the standard deviation of a normally distributed data, we find out that generally 68% of the values are within one standard deviation of the mean, right? So your maximum values are centered around the mean. So within 68, so within mu plus minus sigma, right? So within mu plus minus sigma, you would have 68.6% of the population. And within mu plus minus two sigma, right? So this is within mu plus minus two sigma, you would have 95% of the standard, 95% of the population. And within three standard deviation, you would have 99.7% of the population. So this is a pattern which is, which is basically absolutely, uh, which is, which is a pattern that you can see with normal distribution, right? So in case of normal distributions, you would have your maximum values. So you see within one standard deviation only, you have 68% value. Within two standard deviation, you have covered like almost all values. And within three standard deviation, entire population is done, right? So that's something that's a typical param typical feature of a normal distribution. So now we are coming to the point, con this concept called standard normal distribution. So what is a standard normal distribution is this? Uh, nothing, it's just simple concept. It's a normal distribution with mean equals to zero and standard deviation equals to one. The, the interesting bit of this is any normal distribution can basically be converted into a standard normal distribution. And how can we do that? The understanding is very simple. So let's say this is the distribution, right? So we have weights and we have the mu and sigma. Now instead of, so this is W1, this is W2 and W3 and so on and so forth. So to in, this is your normal distribution, right? So you have your weights which start from 0 0.001. This is, yeah, starts from 0 0.001, goes all the way to 200, right? So let's say W200. So these are your 200 weights. Now, this is a normal distribution. To convert into a standard normal distribution, all you have to do is, for each observation, you have to do minus mu by sigma. W2 minus mu by sigma. Similarly, W3 minus mu by sigma. If we do that all the way till here, W200 minus mu by sigma, we have converted. So if you take a mean of this particular value, right? So remember mu is basically nothing but your summation of W by N, right? So 200 in this case. And sigma is the way we calculated your standard deviation yesterday. So I'm not redoing that. So if you take a mean of this particular distribution, you would say that the mean of this particular distribution would be zero. 
you can calculate for yourself because you are, for every point you are basically subtracting a constant which is the mean so obviously if you take the entire thing and you take all the values now and take the mean it would basically come out to be exactly zero and similarly you are if you are taking sigma you are, if you are taking standard deviation you would see that the standard deviation of this particular uh, this particular variable set of values would be exactly equals to one so this is this has got mean as mu and sigma and this has got mean as zero and standard deviation as one so all we did was basically for each of the observation we basically subtracted the mean and divided it by sigma so this process is called standardizing and the normal random variable of a standard normal distribution is called a standard score or a z score so this particular score that you get right for each variable you would correspondingly get the uh, minus you subtract the mean and you divide it by sigma that is basically your z score this is called the z score so yeah just to kind of show this so this is your normal distribution which is having a mean of 1010 and standard deviation i really don't have an idea but if once you convert into a standard normal distribution its mean is right now at zero and the standard deviation would be one suppose we have a normally distributed random variable x we can calculate a new random variable z as x minus mu by sigma which is exactly what i told such that this particular random the new random variable z would basically have a would follow a standard normal distribution right so the mean of this particular variable z would be zero and the standard deviation of this variable would be one so now we are doing an in-class activity where we say what is the travel time so survey of daily travel time had this particular result so convert this value to z scores right so to do convert into z score first we need to calculate the mean of this numbers the mean of this numbers is 38.8 the standard deviation is 11.7 now using the formula for z score we can calculate for each value we can calculate the corresponding uh, z score right so the corresponding z score is nothing but 26 minus mean of all of these values which is 26 minus 38.8 by 11.7 so minus 1.9 so now we can calculate so if we are given uh, so now this is a more interesting part so now we know how to convert any normal distribution to a standard normal distribution we can do a lot of interesting thing if we are converting things into standard normal distribution and that's the whole point why we actually wanted to introduce the concept of standard normal distribution so while deriving a simple probability distribution earlier we saw the concept of probability mass function where on chart every point represents the probability of that event for a continuous distribution we can similarly calculate the probability from its uh, probability density function pdf using the area under curve right so before we get into area under curve i have already told you this particular point on the curve basically represents the probability that this random variable assumes this value right so w2 right px equals to w2 is given by this particular when you plug so this is a formula uh, so if you have x here this is the general formula for probability distribution when you say x equals to w w2 here you would basically get to the formula for corresponding you would get the probability that what is the probability of x equals to w2 right and that is the probability for that particular value now there is an interesting concept which is called cumulative distributive function right what does the cdf basically say so this is your pdf right so pdf is basically at every point your this particular point on the curve basically says what is the probability of x equals to w2 right so say this is the weight at which we want to this is the point which coordinates is w2 this is w2 comma 0 so w2 comma 0 this is the point and for that particular point if you want to get the probability that this random variable x assumes this value w2 then we can directly get that from this curve right from this point on this curve now for the same thing what is it this is pdf right this is something we are already familiar with what does cdf basically measure cdf basically measured at every point the here it was exactly the probability that you were getting right for each of the points now and here you would basically get the uh, probability that uh, what are the values what is the probability that any value is less than particular value w2 right 
so here you were getting the probability x equals to w2 now here you would get for w2 you would basically plot the probability that what is the probability x is less than equals to w2 right so what to do that you are basically going to calculate the area under the curve for all the points less than w2 right and you're gonna so that curve is gonna look like something like this right so the, obviously at the end of the day it would be at some point where it's kind of towards infinity it would be basically be coming out to be plus one right so this is the one as i've already explained if you take the area under the entire curve you would basically get plus one so obviously this value ranges from zero to plus one and at each point it basically gives you the probability that x is less than equals to w2 so this is called a cumulative distributive cumulative density function right so at each point you are basically summing up the probability so for example at this point you would be basically summing up this area right this is w1 so for w1 you would basically get the probability of x less than w1 and plot this here right and you keep on doing this for all the points right in this curve and that's how you would get your cdf so now let x is a random variable representing weight in kgs of randomly selected students in a city assume that x is normally distributed with mean 60 and standard deviation 50 so obviously as i've already told you this is how you would represent it n belonging to 60 comma 5 right now we want to calculate the probability that for a randomly distributed okay Now we want to calculate the probability. We want to calculate the probability that for a randomly selected person, the weight is below 50 kgs, right? So you want to basically check, but that what is the probability that someone's weight is below 50 kgs, not exactly 50 kgs, but below 50 kgs. So here we, we can calculate the probability that f 50 x is less than equals to 50 is all the summation of all the weights starting from minus infinity to 50 and x minus 60 by 15 right so this is absolutely clear right so this is your probability function so fx equals to so probability sorry x equals to x is f of x small x given by 1 by root 2 pi sigma e to the power minus x minus mu by sigma square right so this is the probability that x the random variable assumes the value small x right so for that we know this is the formula so now if we want to find p of x less than equals to x we have to sum up all the probabilities till starting from minus infinity to infinity and this is by the way the sign of integral in case we are doing summing all continuous value we cannot we are in use that's why we are using this particular symbol of integral right so we are going to integrate all the values of fx so fx is basically the probabilities and we are going to sum up all the probabilities so starting from minus infinity to infinity and that's what you exactly have here so this is your fx right fx where you put fx sigma equals to 15 and mean equals to 60. so now obviously calculating this is a tedious task and it is not possible to integrate normal pdf hence we need to calculate the probability using some numerical analysis technique and this is the part where standard normal distribution comes into play so doing that for any normal distribution is tough but what we can do is we can take x minus we can take the z score of this particular value and for z equals to minus so the z score for 50 is basically minus 0.67 50 minus 60 by 50 so for z equals to 0.7 we can basically use this particular table which is a standard table you can find it everywhere and we'll show you also how to use it in python point is to do this kind of a calculation right this integral for all values right for any given normal any given uh, sigma and min is very tough you do not want to manually calculate this integral what you want to do is a very effective technique is basically convert the distribution from normal distribution to standard normal distribution and then for standard normal distribution the values are already there right so you can just directly calculate that basically x less than equal to 50 is also the same thing as z score being less than minus 0.67 now for minus 0.67 you would basically calculate you would look up this particular table and you would say that uh, phi of minus z is basically equals to 1 minus phi z right 
So minus 0.67 if z less than equals to minus 0.67 is same as 1 minus of phi of 0.67 so you get to the value of 0.67 so 0.6 and 0.6 is here 0.6 and then you look up the table 0.67 is somewhere around 0.74 right so that's what you have 0.67 is phi of so f of 0.67 is uh, 1 0.74 so phi of minus 0.67 is 1 minus 0.74 and that comes out to be 0.25 hence the probability that a randomly selected person from the city will have weight less than 50 is 25.14 percent right that's very intuitive right so what you did was you first you cannot do this calculation for all the integrals right that integral calculation was tough so what you did was you first get the z score of this particular or this particular student and that z score is 0.67 now for 0.67 it's a standard normal distribution right and for standard normal distribution we already have the values so for calculating the cumulative so this is a cumulative distributive cumulative cdf table right this is not a pdf table so in cdf table you basically have the corresponding z score values so you have way you look it up is basically 0.67 right so we know that z less than equals to 0.67 is same as 1 minus uh, z of 67, 0.67 right so now we need to get the value of 0.67 so 0.67 is here you look 0.6 and then you need 0.67 right so you go like this 0.6 you look up the table look up the table 0.67 right so 0.67 is 0.7486 and 1 minus 0.7486 is minus 0.67 so that is 0.2514 and hence you can conclude that the a probability that any anyone's weight is less than 50 kg is minus is 25 percent so now life of bulbs now let's do this in class activity life of bulbs manufactured by a company follow a normal distribution with mean equals to 1600 hour and standard deviation equals to 30 hours so what is the probability that a life bulb at selected would be less than or equals to 15 50 hours what is the proportion of percentage of bulbs having less than life? So first let's do the first question. What is the probability that life of a bulb selected at random will be less than or 1550 hours? Now again what we are going to do is calculate the z score for 1550 and for z score for 0.1515 is minus 0.167. Again for doing that minus 0.167 we need to get the corresponding value of 0.167 and from 0.167 sorry 1.67 and then 1 minus of that would give us minus 1.67 right so that is what is the proportion of percentage of bulbs having life less than or equal to 1660 hours for 1660 hours the calculation is again the same thing 1660 hours minus you do the mean and again probability z less than 2 now probability z less than 2 is very simple you just have to look up the table because this is a positive number you don't need to do 1 minus the whole thing right in case this was a negative number you have to do you cannot look up the value of a negative number so to do and calculate the value of a negative number what you do is 1 minus probability of the positive number positive counterpart right uh, in case this is already the number is positive so all you need to do is just look up the value in the table right so if you look up the table so that was probability of z equals to 2 so z equals to 2 is directly here 2.0 2 .0. 2 .0 is 0 0.9772 so 0.9772 is the percentage of bulbs having life less than or equal to 1660 and similarly you can basically calculate everything in this particular table so now that's the end of our everything that we had to talk about in this particular session about normal distribution so you understand this whole point of cdf in case of normal distributions how you look that up from this particular z table you do not have a way to kind of do this for all possible distributions so what you do is first convert every normal distribution into standard normal distribution and then in the standard normal distribution you look out that particular value right so that's perfectly fine so that's something awesome that we understand we have understood also the same thing for binomial distribution we understand what are the requirements for a distribution to be a binomial distribution and before that we have understood the concept of probability as such intersections unions and conditional probability so now that we understand all of this now let's go to the second part of the session which we'll be talking about right now after this log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content
subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates